Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, Jeremy. Hey, my old headset broke, so I had to get a new one. Sound all right? Yeah. Well, I can definitely hear you guys better. Yay. Yeah, you sound like a movie star. <laughs> hey. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Uh, Woosterbarth won't be here this evening. He got called to uh, his mother's bedside, so I don't know what's going on there. But Okay, neither is Mr. Cummings. So. Oh, really? Oh, it's going to be uh, bare bones sweet. tonight, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, share screen. All right, we got the American flag. Yep. Okay. And there's your face. There we go. I saw a really cool picture of the uh, of some layout that some guy, someone had the uh, foresight to see us go to beach looking like in 50 years, 60 years ago. And I took a picture of it for my background today. I thought it was cool. Oh, I see it. I think it looks like a space age hotel in the back. Yeah, there was like the entire coast of the township was lined with uh, resorts and hotels and, you know, multi uh, multi story facilities for, you know, lodging and living. And hmm. they had uh, there was if right behind my head. I don't know if you can see it very well, but right down here in the corner, there was a uh, uh, there was a swimming pool built on the beach. I thought that was funny. Yeah, uh, I know. Hey, Go Jamie. Hey, Hello, Bill. everybody. Hey. All right. Well, um, in theory, we're all here. Um, Mr. Cummings and Mr. Westerbarth are not going to be in attendance this evening. Um, all right. So that being said, uh, let's call this um, regular board meeting to, um, to order it. Today's uh, September 27th at 7.01. We'll start by um, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America. America. And to the republic, republic for, which for which it stands, one nation, nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice for all. For all. all right. Just open up the agenda. Everybody see the agenda? Yep. Okay. Um, then can we start with roll call, please? Ms. McGuire? Here. Mr. Spencer? Here. Mr. Palmer? Here. Mr. Sutton here, Ms. Richards? Here. Um, do we have any agenda additions this evening? Uh, yes, I had uh, three of them. I had the one was the hiring the additional attorney for litigation and support, and then we needed uh, an addition to create the two checking accounts for DWRF and SRF. And then I also had um, looking at creating a permanent workspace for the EIC director that I would like to have on tonight, at least have a discussion about. Okay, you wanna put those under other? 
Yeah, I would like, just as I listed those, put them right under others. So that would follow in with the other attorney at 10, the DWRF, SRF at 11, and uh, EIC office space as other 12. Um, I only have eight items on the agenda. Oh, you're right. I don't know how I ended up with more. <laughs> okay, so I'm sorry, number nine it. is... So that would be nine, 10, and 11. So attorney, is number support nine. attorney, number 10, I missed, sorry. Yep, number 10 was DWRF SRF checking account. And then 11 for um, EIC director office space. Okay, um, so you're making a motion to do that. Is there support for those agenda additions? Support. So there's a motion by Mr. Sutton and support by Mr. Spencer. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. Richards? Uh, yes. Uh, next on is public comment. Um, again, uh, we have two public comment sections, each of which are limited to four minutes. Um, the first public comment is supposed to be for items that are on the agenda only. So if you have a comment that you would like to wish or make, not wish, make um, that's on, the, uh, on an agenda topic, please raise your hand now. Um, oh. I had a question, Ann. Okay, under public comment. Uh, before when I was absent, you guys had to vote on my absence of approving it. So don't we need to do that for Mr. Wooster and Mr. Cummings also? Yeah, I was gonna ask about that, but I figured it would come up when the time came. Well, I, uh, I guess, um, I think don't think we ever did it before. So that's why I guess I forgot about it. So, um, so we need to do that, I guess, before we go to public comment. Don't know where else we would do that. Yeah, I would say before that. Okay. So we're All voting right. on whether or not to excuse them or not. Is that the? <laughs> That's what happened to me. Yep. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't know why Tim isn't here. I know why Woosty isn't. Does anybody know? Um, Mr. Cummings had emailed both Tammy and I this morning, indicating that he had a schedule conflict. So, um, and then you informed us just before the meeting that Mr. Westerbarth wasn't going to be here. Why isn't he here? A uh, family yes. emergency. Oh. You were still zooming in, I think. Oh, okay. Yes, there was zooming involved. Yeah. Well, so what do we just move to uh, approve their absences or I don't yes. know? Yes. So moved. Because we did last time. So you, you made the motion to approve them? I'll move. Yep, I move to approve their absences. Okay, I'll support that. <laughs> Uh, roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. And thank you for pointing that out, Jamie. I completely forgot about that. So I'm um, now moving on to public comment. You have a comment in regards to an agenda item. You can do that now, or you can wait until the end of the meeting. Anybody wish to speak at the first public comment? Okay, last call for public comment at the beginning of the meeting. All right, hearing none, we'll move on to the uh, consent agenda. Um, on the consent agenda, we have a couple um, meeting minutes. The first one is the work session from September 13th. Are there any comments on that? Uh, I think uh, Mr. Sutton has corrected it. I, I pointed out to him that Mr. Cummings was left off of that, uh, of the list. I did see that in the email. Was that corrected, Josh? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Yeah, Ballard sent, out, sent that to me after I sent out the revised one, so I went ahead and corrected that. Okay.
All right. Sorry, there's just a couple phone lines that were um, open that I'm just, that's no board members, correct? That I was just muting so we didn't have background. I don't think so. Okay, um, so um, we already have that. So then we also have the meeting minutes from September, um, the regular meeting minutes from September 13th. Any comments on those? All right, then we have uh, some payments of bills. We have a prepaid run from September 21st and the amount of 837,545.06. Any questions or comments on those? Yeah, and I have a, I have a couple of questions. Um, on page nine of the packet, um, under that uh, payment of bills, uh, the, there's a payment at the bottom of the page to Harbor House Publisher. Um, it indicates that payment was due back in July 25th for 25.45. Um, I remember I, I mean, we, we talked about that uh, at the time, I think it was last spring. It seems to me there was some uh, urgency on time that it get to the publisher to be able to get our ad in there. Our, I, I don't know why that's why it's so late. Are it, are we still going to be able to get? I think I think we had for years we've had the full page ad on the back page or something like that. Are are we going to be too late for that now? I, One second, I can look that up. Um, Bill, I can at least respond to why it's so late. Um, okay. Yeah. That was brought in um, a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm guessing on the time, but it, was, it hasn't been more than two weeks. Um, it was brought in by uh, the superintendent of Osable Township. Um, there was actually two invoices there and the address that they had been mailing the invoices to was Osable Township. And it was made out to Michael Mitchell and going there. So, um, I put the bill in as soon as Lisa brought it, um, but as far as I, I want to say we still should have our ad. Um, it just said it was past due, which, um, you know, there wasn't a, a whole lot I could do until I got it. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, I mean, yeah, that, you know, that's not on us if they send the, the invoice to the wrong address. Right. Um, just, uh, Okay, I guess I guess we'll find out whether or not we get the ad or not. It, I know that I remember there was a it was sort of critical that it get in on time in order to get to the publisher, and uh, and then along with that, there were um, there were several other payments that I noticed uh, that were um, seemed to be appeared to be late. Uh, for instance, on the next page, 10, under the police fund, the Gary Oil Company uh, invoice that was due on August 31st. Um, I don't know. I, I, I guess I don't understand. Um, it, it, again, if it's something where the invoice wasn't sent to the right place, I guess, you know, we can't, we can't pay it on time if we don't get it. But um, I know, and I noticed there's there's several of them in our packet uh, on, on page 11, um, and again on page 12, Old Orchard Park, when it was due August 14th. Um, I guess I don't understand why we don't get our bills paid on time. But if there's if there's a reason, like with the Harbor House, we send to the wrong address, then um, I guess that's understandable. Yeah, Bill, we had uh, right at the end of the month was the transition from Treasury to me. And then um, I've I've went through, I guess, to let you know, the reason we had this one was just going through and cleaning up um, my process. Uh, we have those attachments in there. So I went through and any of those hanging out that may not have had an invoice in, I went through and printed out those invoices that were attached to the original PO 
That's why this is such a big check run is currently as of last Thursday, all of our bills as a township are paid and the ones that are invoiced in are actually already being worked on for the next check run after these two that you guys are approving. And that was just getting it caught up and I guess a difference from how I do it to how Jane did it. But now we have everything caught up. That's why that check run was so big as I went through our PO system and looked for any and all POs that were still hanging out there. And then we also um, in the last month changed how we're doing credit cards as well um, because we did have an issue with invoices getting turned in from other departments. And the way it gets sent out, it literally had it down to two weeks to try to get with everybody who had a card out at the park, DPW, anywhere else and get all those invoices. Now all those invoices are being given to me and they're going in as an accounts payable when we receive the bill with all sporting documentation. But just so you guys know, and I know, Bill, you're always having and keeping up on them. We are now currently all bills are up to date. So any of them that we should get. Um, if you see that late invoice, I put in those times just so you guys know when it was due. Um, like uh, the one with Tammy, I still went back and put in that original invoice date just so I know. And I like having those in there so you guys see them and can question them and ask as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate that, Josh. Uh, just one other, one one other quick question on uh, on page twelve, uh, and this this is something that's coming up later in the agenda. The uh, Micah Myers uh, payments were were approving a couple of invoices for them. On one of the invoices, they are showing a a, a past due amount of a thousand forty eight oh eight, and that is uh, under Fund five ninety sewer. Um, as a as a, one of the uh, payment uh, bills that's listed in there, and then under the uh, fund five ninety one the water there's another bill to Micah Myers, uh, which is for DWRF projects phase two water project, in the amount of two thousand two hundred and twenty five dollars. I'm assuming that's a separate invoice from the two we're approving tonight, and I yes. I, I I guess. I guess what I'm on what I'm unclear about is that we we have these invoices that were being paid this 1048 in the 2225 and we're not I, I don't recall correct me if I'm wrong maybe, maybe my memory's failing me but I don't remember approving any mic invoices in the past so I guess my question is, we have two on the agenda to approve tonight. Why didn't we have some of these other invoices for these amounts to approve at an earlier meeting? Or do we really need to do that? Can we just you know, pay the invoices and have them on the, on the payment of bills and then approve them as we go through as opposed to approving all these invoices separately as an agenda item? Uh, that would depend on what the board wants. Um, right now we do, when we pay them, there are a lot of things that do come to the board based on that order that are just simple payments that were already in, but if they exceed certain amounts, we bring them to you. Um, those Micah Myers gave us a total invoice cost, but those were, let's see. I have those, Josh, if you don't. Yeah, I mean, if you've got them up, I was just pulling them up through the purchase order here. It's an easy yep. way to track it. Yeah, um, there's three separate invoices there, Bill. Um, okay. So one invoice is $1,780.25. And there are two other invoices, each totaling $210. So those were put in separate, but I, I believe that after adding it up, the $2,200.25 is those three invoices together, which would make sense to pay in one check instead of, you know, three separate. Correct. Sure. Okay. All right. That's, that's fine. I just, uh, I, I was, I was curious when I saw the, you know, two Michael Meyer payments and the payment of bills, and then we have invoices that we're approving and, you know, apparently they would have sent invoices in previously for these other two amounts. In fact, one of them is included on one of the invoices that's in the packet. So um, I know it seems like we, you know, every every meeting we spend a good deal of time 
approving invoices. And I'm just questioning whether or not that's necessary if we can just review them in the payment of bills. But, you know, if you want to continue to bring these invoice, certain invoices to the board, then that's, you know, that's fine. If, if there's a reason for it, that's, I, I'm totally fine with that. Just, it was just a question that came to me when I was reviewing these, the payment bills. And well, the I, so. I had assumed um, because my limit is 2000, anything over that would still need to be brought to the board. Right. Okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure that that because the the one bill to Mike Myers, a thousand forty eight, is is an amount that's it's showing on one of the invoices that we're approving. So we have we can approve the lower amount. Uh, the, and the the twenty two hundred. I just I was just curious. Wanted to make sure it wasn't part of one of the other invoices that we're approving tonight. So that's fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so that was under the um, September 21st run. Forgot already. Are we on the 20? Yeah. Uh, are we on the, okay, so any more questions on the 21st? All right. Um, do we have any questions from the September 28th run, which was 14,718.55? Okay, and then um, last under finance, we have the fund summary report through August 2021. Any questions there? Okay, with that then, can I um, have, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there support? Support. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Sutton and support by Mr. Palmer to uh, approve the consent agenda. Roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Uh, yes. Motion, or, yeah, motion carried. Sorry, I'm thrown off by the two less people that are voting. Yes. <laughs> I had to the line them out. Don't feel yeah. bad. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, next on, we have um, subcommittee reports. We have um, Rick with Rowe Engineering, I believe. Good evening, Hello. everybody. Hey, Rick. Hey. Uh, briefly, an, an update. Uh, the uh, water main phases, we are nearing 90% completion on phase B, G, and F41, the portion of phase H going out <clears throat> to Colbath Road. Um, so the contractor is, is, is uh, pr uh, proceeding very, very well on that. We have the Biggest piece of the installation out on River Road is waiting for the delivery of the meter pit, um, which should be, I'm hoping, any day now so that we can get that installed. And then an update on um, service connections. Uh, location one, which is uh, Green, uh, Oscona Street and Beach. We have four uh, residents that have signed up for the services, three we have declined, and we have one that is <clears throat> still considering it. Um, uh, location two uh, out on River Road and off River Road, we have 17 that have signed up, eight have said no, three maybe, and we have seven that are still pending. So we'll be coordinating that with the uh, contractor and his plumber here shortly to start getting those connections taken care of. And the goal will be to get that hopefully wrapped up by early November, which gives us time to get uh, restoration at least in this fall. And then we'll obviously be back in the spring to touch up any, any of that that needs touching up after the winter. Uh, the sanitary sewer system project, we held the pre-construction meeting last Wednesday <clears throat> contractor is moving forward the best he can. He is going to be revising the schedule uh, because he's gotten preliminary indication from uh, most of the pump, the, the pump station suppliers, the pumps, the equipment controls that uh, he possibly is not going to actually be able to take possession of the material until spring. Um, 
originally we had a May substantial completion date. So he is gonna be revising that schedule and we'll be discussing that with Eagle. Uh, but again, because of uh, supply shortages, supply delays, that project will push through most of next summer and, and be wrapped up more likely than not early fall. But we will keep you apprised of that as that develops. Uh, funding opportunities. Um, we've been pushing a little bit on this to try to get some answer on the C2R2 grant funding that was out there. Um, we did get some, some information back from uh, Eagle on that, that yes, uh, Oscoda is right at the cutoff line, unfortunately on the wrong side of it. Um, but as other communities, and they're hoping to get that information in soon, uh, but it could be could be into later this year, early next year. And those communities above us that can't utilize all the funds, that's where the trickle down to Oscoda would come. And so we would hopefully hear something later this year, or early next year, and if any of that funding becomes available. I have also reached out to um, Sue Aller's office, working with um, her assistant, Jesse yes, and they do have a request in for 1.825 million, which will be supplemental to the uh, budget, which will be approved for shortly. So he will be keeping us apprised of, of how that discussion goes. Also checked with Jacob Bennett at uh, Congressman Kildee's office. <clears throat> they were very interested in why USDARD turned down the ECWAG grant. So I gave him all of the uh, reasons that we were provided by USRD. Um, some of you might recall it was C Congressman Kildee's office a couple of years ago that really spearheaded the, uh, the ECWAG grants coming to Oscoda. So I'm hoping that that will um, spur some, some looking into as far as you know what if anything can be done there. <clears throat> the other thing is, is they are submitting or have submitted Oscoda for community project funding uh, opportunities. And again, that will be coming up here shortly for discussion around the federal budget uh, process. Uh, phase three trail, we are still in the, in the coordinating efforts with the uh, State Historic Preservation Office. U.S. Fisheries and Wildlife and MDNR and Consumers Energy on the, uh, the uh, uh, right-of-way easements for the trail, the rattlesnake issues, and SHPO signing off on the historic um, investigation into the site. Uh, Ratliff Park, we did get uh, word that there, there was some more clarification that we needed to provide uh, the DNR, which we I think uh, have gotten all that information to them. Hopefully we will hear um, final disposition of that grant first part of November, and then the funds will be available next spring, I believe is the time frame. Uh, site plan reviews and such, we we uh, working with the developer in the township, the, the plans and uh, permit application for Bachman Drive were submitted and I did get a response back from uh, the Bay City uh, D Eagle office that we should have answer on that permit tomorrow, if not by Wednesday. So we can uh, get the contractor started on that. And that's basically my report. Anybody have any questions on any of the topics that uh, are in the report or any others? Yeah, Rick, uh, this is Bill. Yeah. I have one. One question about the uh, the uh, the water main project and the connections. Yes. Uh, uh, since since those are, are paid for um, under our under our uh, our uh, your funding our funding program. Yes. Um, is there a time limit on when people can you know like change their mind if they want to hook up to it? Do they have a certain amount of time to do that? Well, the substantial completion for that contract is, I don't have the specific date in front of me. I think it's either the end of November or the first part of December. That's the, that's the contract with Catterman. Now, 
we're trying to push them to get you know answer and and i think the the the, the few remaining that well the, the few that said no and the few that are kind of on the fence once they see the plumber and the contractor out there doing these hookups and they're talking to their neighbors who are getting hooked up it'll be similar to loud last year that once once that started happening more and more signed on um, we can stretch out the contract longer if need be uh, but there is there is a there is an end date i don't know if we want to string it out until next spring i really would like to get everybody that's on board with this one uh, taken care of or at least signed up by the end of December, I'll say. Um, but we'll we'll work with them and we'll work with obviously Catterman and his sub to uh, to try to uh, accommodate everybody that that might change their mind. So um, but we'll be we'll be out there, we'll be present, we'll be talking to them. And those that that are out there will we'll double check with the ones that said no. And obviously we're following up with the ones that were maybe. Okay. All right. I, you know, I was just curious because we do have, and I don't know how many applies in that area, but we do have people that are only part-time residents. So they're only here, you know, in the summertime and if they didn't get the opportunity, I, I, I just wanted to know what, what people's um, ability to, to get that taken care of without having to incur any cost, uh, what, you know, what time frame that would be. And, and we have talked to everybody. Um, and they know the timetable. They've informed us on when they're leaving for the fall, winter. So you know we have that information. And again, if there's a few that that we might miss because they take off for the winter, like I said, Catterman will be around in the spring for restoration. So we'll work with him if there's a few stragglers that we would still need to hook up next spring. But I I want to try to avoid that as much as possible. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Yep. I guess that was my question as well, Rick. Is has every? I mean, somebody has verbally talked to each homeowner, and you've gotten yeah. either a yes, no, or a maybe. There's no like non. Um, there's contact, I guess. There's still a few that we have missed, um, but we've left the we've left the information in their door, and when our observers come back. Um, the, the information is gone. So we know they've, somebody's gotten it. So mm -hmm. he had, he has a list of those. We're cross-referencing it with the phone calls that I've gotten that they've told me, you know, there's been a few that obviously don't live there full time. There's some that own property that don't live there. So we're, we're scrutinizing those just to make sure that they're informed. For, for instance, there's one property owner that has two vacant lots that he obviously there's not going to be a service hookup, but he wants to make sure that the curb stop is installed and the meter pit is installed. And he's provided his sister that lives down the street that is physically there. So we're coordinating with her uh, working for him on, on his behalf. So we're pulling out all the stops. Steve Ludwig, our inspectors out there. Um, stopping in frequently to, to try to get everybody at least a face-to-face -face discussion. So we're close. Okay. Oh, sorry, it, just one more question on that. So we're not putting a meter pit or a curb stop at a vacant lot, correct? It's only for a house resident? If, no, we are for every, every vacant lot, we are putting a curb stop uh, just for future connection. And that was the that was programmed into it. Um, <clears throat> we won't put a meter pit in unless the property owner has requested it. And I talked to Doug Moen about that last week at the uh, at the precon, and he says as long as they've requested it, he's got no problem having a meter pit installed. There just won't be any meter in it until such time the property is developed. But again, since all of that is included in the project costs. Um, you know, there's no exposure for the township. Right. I mean, there's no cost, but there's then potentially, uh, you know, another line that won't ever be connected to, I guess, which we've run into problems up in Lakewood Shores with the same thing. So that's all I'm thinking. 
Are those he, people those people are paying ready to serve on that though, right? That is correct. Okay. Yeah, okay. moving forward, they will all be paying ready to serve. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody okay. else have any questions for Rick? No? All right. Well, thank you, Rick. I think okay. you're, are you still, yeah, you're still got to hang out. Sorry. No problem. All right. Okay. Um, so now moving on to the superintendent's report. Um, first on, we have the Skill Avenue Purchase Agreement. Amy? Okay. Your packet contains the buyer's signed purchase agreement for the sale of the Skeel Avenue site to Asable Developments LLC for development of 200 unit multifamily apartment community. The PA has been worked out with the buyer, buyer's legal counsel, and the township attorney. The financial terms of the sale remain consistent with the previous board approval, $60,000 cash at closing. Um, I will add to that they do have a $6,000 good faith deposit as well. Um, I would ask that the board consider approving the purchase agreement for the sale of Skeel Avenue site and have the township supervisor and clerk execute the document. Okay, does anybody have any questions or comments on that purchase agreement or are you ready for a motion? Yeah, I would make a motion that we approve the purchase agreement for the sale of Skill Avenue site and have the township supervisor and clerk execute the document. Support. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Sutton and support by Mr. Palmer. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. McGuire? Uh, yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes, motion carried. Um, next on, um, we have a, we had a placeholder for the Ani Medical um, Purchase Agreement, but there is not one available um, to review. So we will skip that. Um, so then we go to number three, which is Bachman Drive Water Main Design Invoice. Tammy? Okay, and the utility committee recently met with contractors to discuss the joining of the Bachman Drive water main to the township's water system to connect two dead end municipal mains. Uh, the committee also discussed splitting the design costs and other fees associated with this project. I would ask that the board consider approving the township's portion of the design fees in the amount of $2,500 to be paid from fund 5910028210000. Here, are there any questions on this? All right, is there a motion to move forward approving that invoice? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, invoice from uh, Russo Engineering uh, for the design fee for the Bachman water main extension to be paid from 591-000-821.000. Support. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Palmer and support by Mr. Spencer. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mrs. Richards? Yes. Motion carried. Um, next on, we have the Bachman Drive Utility Easement Agreement. Tammy? Your packet contains a utility easement drawn up by Landmark Title for the properties along Bachman Drive. This easement agreement is based on the survey for a water line to be installed across lots 19, 20, 21, and 22 of the supervisor's plat and will grant the township access to maintain and operate the water system and other related infrastructure. Um, I would ask that you please consider allowing the township supervisor and the township clerk to execute the easement agreement as presented. Is there um, any questions on this and there's about 4,000 pages of signatures huh 
Yeah, well, there's a few um, properties, a few parcels, looks like. So everybody has to sign off. I don't know what that dinging key is. I think that's uh, Tammy's email. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Not me. That's no, it's not you. It's somebody's. Happy? Somebody's getting messages. Okay. Anyways, um, so we need to. We needed a, a motion to approve this easement agreement. Yes. Specific. Is there any specific things that need to be put into it into the motion mm -hmm. to make nope. it uh, perfect and binding? Nope. Easement is presented. I, think, I believe. And just. Hmm. I think just for clarity, so that understands what this is that we're talking about. These are the properties that are on Lake Huron behind the bakery and the bowling alley. And, and those properties, uh, they're not in because there is potential contamination that was covered there years ago from a previous uh, dry cleaners on 23. And um, it's a benefit to the township to be able to connect those two dead ends. There's, there's a, dead, a water main that dead ends just to the south of those properties one that dead ends just to the north. And uh, every, every good engineer that I've ever talked to says water means uh, you want to eliminate dead ends wherever you can. So this is a benefit to the township, eliminate two dead ends in our water system. And it also will allow uh, the owners of these properties, the developers to build uh, nice homes on there to, uh, uh, Add to the add to the uh, tax base of the community, and I believe they're planning on uh, fairly expensive homes being built. There's one already built. They can't get approval on their mortgage, as I understand, until uh, the water is approved. So this this is going to be a benefit to to not only the township but uh, future development there um, along Lake Huron. Right. Thank you for pointing that out, Bill. And I guess I'll, I'll just add to that there. They could have actually done like a long service line, like an individual to that property, but that's not the optimum for our, you know, for our, uh, for our system. So, you know, doing this whole water main extension is going to be better for our system and in the long run better for um the uh, development opportunities there and, you know, kind of a win-win situation, I guess. So um, anyways. Well, then, then I move to accept the Bachman Drive Utility Easement Agreement as written. Support. Hey, there's a motion by Mr. Spencer and support by uh, Mr. Sutton. Roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Motion carried. Um, next on, we are to the, is it Mika or Micah Myers invoices? Sorry, I don't know which one. However you want to say it. Okay, I'll just say the <laughs> Myers invoices. Okay. All right. Go ahead, Tammy. Okay, so I have two outstanding invoices from, I, I call it Mika Myers. Okay. I'm just guessing. Um, invoice number 659855 for professional services rendered for the DWRF project, as well as invoice number 662247 for services rendered for the township sewer project. I would ask that you consider approving invoice 659855 in the amount of $9,117,000 to be paid from fund 591-000-826.000 and invoice number 662247 in the amount of $4,235 to be paid from fund 590 <laughs> Zero 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 eight two six that zero zero zero, and I can also add um, the way that uh, Mika Myers invoices you. It gets a little confusing, and so that's I had to have him, uh, Mark Nettleton, with Mika Myers, explain each one of these bills so I could figure out exactly what we owed. So. And they're from now on going to single them out. That way it doesn't get so confusing. 
Yeah, I'm sitting here looking at it. And if you wouldn't have highlighted, there might have been what's going on here. Yeah. Uh, well, I suppose that I would uh, move to approve Mika Meyer's invoice number 659855 in the amount of $9,117 to be paid from, uh, what was the account, Tammy? Uh, 591-000-826-000. That one. Support. Hey, there's a motion by... Uh, Mr. Spencer, support by Ms. McGuire for that invoice 659855 to be paid. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, and then we have um, one other invoice, 662247. And also move. Oh, good. Oh, in the amount of uh, 4235. All right. Now, I'd... though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd move to approve um, Mika Myers' address, Mika Myers' invoice number, 662247, in the amount of $4,235 flat. And that's to be paid from the same account, Tammy. Five nine one zero 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 eight two six dot zero eight. No, no, no different account to be paid this from. Sewer five nine zero. Five nine zero. Zero zero zero. Zero 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 eight two. Six. Six dot zero zero zero. Support. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Spencer and support by Mr. Palmer for invoice six six two two four seven to be paid. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Moving on to number six, the Baker Tilly engagement letter. Hey, your packet contains an engagement letter from Tom Tracyak with Baker Tilly to assist the township with municipal advisory services in 2022. Um, these services are related to next year's DWRF project. This will not be paid for through the township budget, but through the DWRF. Um, I would ask that the board approve the Baker Tilly engagement letter and costs related with a not to exceed $19,500 and authorize the township superintendent to execute the document. Okay, is there any questions? That's for the entire year of 2022? Yes. Hmm. We're going to wait till we have money in the cash flow part to pay it out of that, correct? Most definitely, yes. Okay, just checking. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, because we don't have anything in there right now. <laughs> right, so what we're doing right now is we're just signing the letter, I believe this doesn't need to be paid until um, closer to 2022. But okay. Tom wanted to get this out and taken care of for next year. Yeah, so that, that is all of their effort. Well, make... That is all of their effort. I'm sorry. That's all their effort for the projects later in 2022. So they do not require any payment at this time. Sorry for the interruption. Oh, well, that's okay. Thanks, Rick. Thanks yeah, for, I will for make, the clarification. Make motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, approve having the superintendent execute the letter of engagement with Baker Tilly for an amount not to exceed nineteen thousand five hundred dollars for two thousand twenty-two municipal advisory services related to the EWRF projects. Support. Support. There's a motion by Mr. Palmer and support by Mr. Sutton. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Motion carried. 
Um, next on, we move to the other category. Uh, we're in the assessor resignation and RFP request. I noticed that she said that it needs to be changed and updated a little bit. Is the document that's in the packet, is that has that document been changed and updated or is this one the one that needs the work? Um, yeah. Sorry. That's the old one. Okay. Who's gonna be the person that updates it? I had assumed that um, I could work with Nancy um, as she is offered to do so um, and create. That's what I'm asking for is permission to get one ready and then bring it back to the board so we can take it out. Um, I believe this is something we need to do very much sooner than later as well. Um, I would move to approve the uh, current assessor and the superintendent, uh, Nancy and Tammy, from, to update this document as they see fit and bring it back to the board for approval so we can get the uh, RFP out. Hey, um, is there support? Support. So there's a motion by Mr. Spencer and support by Ms. McGuire um, to facilitate that RFP process. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Uh, yes, motion carried. Um, also at the same time, I mean, the letter from Nancy is a formal, um, I guess you would say resignation. Um, she gave us the heads up at the budget work session um, that this would be more of a, you know, um, a formal presentation. So we need, what the, we need to address that. I'll make, a re, I'll make a motion that we accept the resignation of Nancy's, off, uh, Nancy's company with regrets. Support. Okay, so there is a motion by Ms. McGuire and support by Mr. Sutton, I think, to accept the resignations. Yes. Uh, with regrets, and, yeah, and I would just add as well, um, you know, totally understand your direction, um, especially if your, your husband is retiring and you guys want to spend, you know, more time and um, together and doing great things. So we really appreciate um, the last 26 years, uh, Nancy, um, and appreciate you, you know, helping us with the RFP process and kind of looking at the department to see how we're gonna move forward. So thank you. Uh, with that, roll call, please. Mr. Spencer? No. Mr. Palmer? Yes, with regrets. Ms. McGuire? Yes, with regrets. Mr. Sutton, yes, with regrets. Ms. Richards? Uh, yes, with regrets. Jeremy, was yours a legit no? Well, it, it is now, but uh, yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't want her. She needs, we need four more years, sorry. <laughs> right. Overruled. Huh? I was overruled. All right, okay, so Spencer was a no. All right, okay. All right, uh, motion passed. Okay, um, moving on to Furtaw Field Road re Relinquishment, sorry, and survey request. Um, I think this one I am going to let Nancy take. She um, put a lot of drive behind this, so Nancy. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, all right, I, I never know with this phone if it's working or not. So basically, we have spent quite a bit of time during the last six weeks working on the um, issues that surfaced on the title search for Furtaw Field. There was some questions relative to some ownership of the parcels, and we found that we, the township was in possession of the original deeds. They simply were not recorded. I've had conversations with the Register of Deeds Office, and um, those documents are recordable, and the recommendation is that we get those documents recorded along with any other documents that we may have 
that have not been recorded for other properties. I've been in communications with Bruce Bolin and Tim Friel concerning Mill Street as it was originally platted and the actual physical location of Evergreen Street. So um, through all these conversations, the best solutions that we found to clear up this discrepancy would be for the township to provide with the road, the road commission an easement for the current existence of Evergreen Street and both the road commission and OSCO to township adopt resolutions vacating Mill Street as it was originally platted. Um, apparently at one point in time, I believe when the school requested to um, enlarge their athletic facility, they acquired an easement for from the township for properties that it had. Um, so according to Chris Rapp, this action would satisfy the title insurance problems. So um, in order to correct that, in order to give a proper easement to the road commission, it would require that the properties be surveyed. This is something that I feel that the township we need to address these discrepancies because even if the township is looking to get grants in the future, you're going to have to be able to demonstrate clear title. So these issues do need to be resolved. I think considering we've had a significant number of um, different individuals involved in it, while it's still all fresh in everybody's mind, would be a really good time to, um, to execute this stuff and, and get it taken care of. So we're requesting the board to consider um, uh, taking the actions that were that were mentioned, getting the deeds recorded, getting a survey of the properties, and doing the uh, granting the easement to the road commission, and doing resolutions to vacate Mill Street as it was originally platted. I do believe in the correspondence. I had also sent a couple of um, color coded maps to hopefully clarify what's going on a little bit better. Are there any questions? Um, I guess the only thing I would point out, out is uh, we did have, there was a survey and I clarified this with Rick already, Freeman, um, the township paid for a survey a couple of years ago um, when they were looking at putting the multi-use building there um, with Roe, but that was a uh, topo survey. It was not a boundary survey. Um, Rick, can you just confirm that, that there's nothing there that we can use? Yes, the only thing that we verified through that was the supposed road right of way, mm -hmm. you know, as far as a defining that, which would be part of the easement request that Nancy just mentioned as far as, you know, what would be turned over by the, uh, the road commission in the township, so. Okay, so we don't have anything in our hands now that would um, that are is gonna suffice for us uh, actual boundary survey, correct? That is correct. Okay. Any idea what the cost of something like that is? Uh, we did look into it, um, and, and you know, I haven't I haven't obviously submitted anything formal, but it looks like with the information that we do have that we did gather that uh, in a, in uh, again, time and materials not to exceed two grand. Um, actually, our survey department doesn't think it'll be that much, but uh, like I said, just conservatively right now, uh, it sounds like Nancy's done a fair amount of research with the road commission and such, so that will help with that price. Um, but okay. but ballpark right around two thousand. Okay. So what all do we need? Do we need a motion for the for a survey to take place? Do we need any other ones right now to finish or to to file those uh, those deeds with the county? Do we need a motion for that or? Well, Can I jump in real quick and ask. I'm sorry, uh, Nancy. This is Tim Frill. But refresh my recollection. Which deeds were not recorded? Um. Okay. Off the top of my head, I do not recall exactly which lots there were. Um. But there were a couple of lots that we, the township was in possession of the original deeds. However, the original deeds had not been recorded. Were those like the really old ones or were there more recent ones? From yes, yes, Th those okay. were the, 
they those were the deeds dating back to I believe like the 1920s, right. which was right. why I had to touch base with the Register of Deeds office as far as their recordability because obviously the documents then did not meet the current standards. Right. Okay. That's okay. That that does refresh my recollection. Yeah. So those should be recorded. Then we got to get with the uh, the road commission to coordinate a um, their vacation of mill. And then our relinquishment after that it should happen in that succession. Correct. Now, my understanding from the conversations that I had with um, with Bruce is that the road commission is requesting an easement for Evergreen prior to adopting the resolution to vacate Mill Street. Or, or yeah, or it would be like a simultaneous exchange or um, a condition to the Correct. relinquishment. Yeah, but either way, yeah, it's a good idea to have everything all set and ready. Survey wise, description wise, have it run through Landmark, uh, have Chris sign off on it with the underwriters before um, either the road commission or we take action on the road. So, so I, I mean, it sounds like a multi-layer or it doesn't sound like it, it is a multi-layer thing. We have resolutions possibly, we have a survey, so on. So I guess my thought would be is that we um, just do a formal motion um, to, I mean, I'm asking what your thoughts are as well, Mr. Friel and board, um, but we uh, do a motion to um, look at um, like, I guess, clearing the title um, as it would be um, to set that motion in process. And then things are gonna be coming back to us for approval in regard to resolutions, survey costs and that kind of stuff. I mean, what is your thoughts, Tim? Uh, yeah, if you could authorize, generally we could, you could say, go ahead and record those deeds. Um, and if the board is otherwise okay uh, with getting this necessary survey work done not to exceed 2000, unless you want a, you know, a formal uh, proposal to come back first. And then, yeah, more on the general premises, let's get it going to what we need to do to clear title um, to what we, you know, what we wanna deal with and getting the uh, easement in exchange, the quid pro quo over there by, I think it's the video store um, on the north end of the field. To back to the road commission. So I, I think a general uh, motion would be fine, but articulate maybe allowing us to get the survey done if it doesn't exceed that 2000 and then going ahead and recording those old unrecorded deeds. So the motion right now is just for those two items and then fixing all the easements and whatnot is going to be done at a later time. Or is that something that we should push forward on now? Or do we have to have these other things done first? <laughs> like, Ann, like Ann said, if, yeah, if we can have a general, let's move forward because no matter what, we're going to have to come back if everything goes as planned and we're still gonna have to come back to the board um, to deal with the road, just as a, for example. Right, abandoning after we have, right. So right. I guess, um, uh, if, Ms., um, Rick, are you comfortable? Like, I mean, should we do like a 20, a not to exceed maybe 2,500 for the survey? Um, or, you know, what, what's your thought there? No, I, I, I would be fine with the not to exceed 2000. Okay. And if for some reason something came out of the process, similar to other things, we would come back to let you know. And if it would be, you know, we'd have an estimate for whatever additional. But again, based on the work we've done out there, our surveyors and grayling were pretty confident that that number should cover it. So. Okay, uh, well, well, I think we'll start, or I'd start by making a motion then to approve um, row professionals um, to do a, a survey of Fertile Field in amount not to exceed $2,000. Note the type of survey? A boundary survey. It's a boundary survey, isn't it? That's correct. Boundary. Okay, a boundary survey. And getting the, the description of the property necessary to convey an easement to the row. Correct. Person. Yeah. yeah, boundary survey and um, legal description. Yeah, for the for the easement of uh, easement. of the uh, road evergreen. Yeah, Is it evergreen. Okay, so let me amend that. Um, so um, authorizing road to do a boundary survey and create legal descriptions for the evergreen easement. Yeah, evergreen road easement. Sorry. That's correct. Okay. With the survey, with the survey amount. Um, with, uh, yeah, with the not to exceed amount of $2,000. Yeah, I'll support that. That was legal description for Evergreen? Yeah, leave, legal description for Evergreen okay. mm -hmm. uh, easement. 
not to exceed 2000. Okay, and I made the motion and uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Richards made the motion and Mr. Palmer supported that. All right, roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes, motion carried. Now, do we need another motion to uh, to file the document, the deeds that we've got with the county, or is that just something that just goes without Record saying? Record the deeds, unrecorded yeah. deeds? I mean, they haven't been recorded this long, so, I mean, if they could have been just recorded, I would assume that they somebody would have just said, oh, we should probably do that. Do we need a board motion to uh, facilitate the recording of said documentation? How many deeds are there? There's a couple. I found when I looked through, there were a couple of deeds relative to Furtaw Field, but in surfing through the um, the book with all of the, the deeds in it, there I did come across a few others. I didn't keep track count-wise, but there are some other documents, original documents there that have not been recorded, and, and obviously the recommendation would be that, that they be recorded. So I really couldn't tell you how many there are all total. Right. So basically, yeah, and it's it's a flat fee now anyways, isn't it, with the Register of Deeds? I think three that, or four documents. That I could not answer. I, I, I thought that your fees were somehow also related to the purchase price, considering a lot of these are relatively old deeds. I'm sure the purchase price would not have been anything like what it would be now. Uh, right. I, I, I think it's just the flat fee per so many pages or something. But anyways, um, I, I, how about if we just, I guess my thought would be that we make a motion. I'm just again running this out there. This is not a formal, but we do something um, in this sense to uh, um, approve recording. Oh, I hate to say old documents, but um, Hmm. Any unrecorded deeds that might work? Yeah, in regard to, you know, um, and are we in just regard looking? to doing a clear type. I mean, the whole process is is, is we want Fertile Field uh, with a clear title. Right. Um, so I guess that's my thought is, is that the motion would be um, to record any documents that should be recorded in order to um, provide clear title to Bertaw Field. Is uh, that a legit? The only, hmm? the only thing with that, Anne, is that you, you have other documents out there that have not been recorded that really should be for other properties the township owns. Do we, want to, do we want to say that the ones for Furtaw Field get filed post haste and that we go th and then that and have another motion to take to take a little bit of time and find all of them that haven't been recorded and then bring them to the board so that we know what they are and then have them recorded at that time? Would that be? Yeah, I mean, I guess. So just for my clarification, Nancy, you're saying just in general, nothing to do with Furtaw Field, they're just things that should have been recorded over the last however many years that you've found when going through some stuff? Yes, when I was okay. searching through for the deeds for Furtaw, because I, I had copies in my file, um, gotcha. and as I was searching through to get a cleaner copy, I came across other original documents that, that do not have the recording st stamps on them. Got you. Okay, so I guess I would I would like to handle this in two you know different meetings tonight. We will deal with Furtaw Field and going towards a clear title, and then if you could consolidate um, or come up with a list of the other ones that you found, and then we'll come back at the next meeting um, so we can see what those are, so we know what we're dealing with. Is that fair? Okay, I can do that. Okay, yes, thanks. I can do that. All right. So. Support. All right. So I, I think my motion was um because I'm pretty trying to do that and I would love to help you navigate that if you want to do it. Eileen Reardon, could you please oh, mute your okay. microphone? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Yep. Oopsie. I let her in and then I didn't, yeah. Um okay, so the motion my motion is to approve um recording the documents 
um, necessary in working towards uh, achieving a clear title for fertile field. Support. Okay. So there's a motion by Ms. Richards, support by Mr. Spencer to record basically unrecorded documents um, towards securing um, clear title in Fertile Field. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Uh, yes, motion carried. As muddly okay, as it went. A, and do we need a, a, a motion to approve a resolution for vacating uh, the Mill Street? Um, I, think I guess I, yeah, I would, I think we need to have that resolution created and then just brought back to us. I, I think there's time, but do you think Mr. Freel for the next meeting? I would I would hold off on that until we had the survey done. Okay. Yep. Yep. I was gonna okay. say I think yeah. All right. So I think these two things get the ball rolling, um, and then uh, we can come back to the table. Okay. Okay. So moving on, uh, Nancy, don't go too far. Um, tax foreclosure properties, twenty twenty one right of refusal. Okay. So what I have sent you is uh, a brief explanation as to how the tax foreclosure process works along with a list of the properties that are currently going before the auction for a no bid. I believe there's um, like six or seven of them located in Lakewood Shores. I'm not aware of there being any benefit to the township in obtaining any of these. And basically what happens it's a three-step process. In the spring, the township is given an opportunity to acquire any properties that they wish at market value before they go to the public auction. After the first public auction, any of the properties that are left over before it goes to the second auction, the township is again given an opportunity to acquire those properties at market value. If we do not take any, any of the properties that we do not take, go to the second auction. After that is completed, any, and that's the step that we're at right now is they're getting ready for the second auction. After this auction occurs in November, we will be sent a list of the properties that were not acquired at the auction. And at that point in time, the township must send the state a letter declining those properties or we will automatically take possession of them. So again, we're at the second step, just moving into the second auction. And I'm not aware of there being any need or reason for the township to take possession of any of the Lakewood Shores lots. So after we refuse them and uh, we do it in writing and the last round of that, what happens to the properties then just out of curiosity? At that point, they go into the state land bank system where individuals can acquire them from the state. And, and, and until someone acquires them, they are basically um, tax exempt because the state has ownership of them. Hmm. Thank you. Yep. So at this time, there's no action needed to be taken, correct? Correct. You would only act upon it if you wanted, if we wanted to them. purchase one of these lots. Right. Okay. Pretty sure we don't want any of those lots. Can't think of I, any I don't reason. Think so. Well, I mean, not that they're not nice. Some of them aren't nice like lots. I'm not saying that, but then there's, yeah. Well, I mean, we're not going to put the township hall out there. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> nope. 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 Okay, we just have to um, definitely make sure we come, you know, that we write, uh, do actually reject those later um, in written format so that we don't get them. Should so. we go ahead and send in the letter now? Can we do that? Is it too early? Say, can, we, can we draft the letter ahead of time, Nancy? Uh, or do we have to wait till that comes back? No, I think you actually have to wait till they send the notification. It's usually the, the end of November that they'll send it. Um, you kind of have to keep your eye out for it because 
it's they send it to different departments. Sometimes they'll send me the list. Sometimes they'll send it to the clerk. Sometimes they send it to the treasurer. So, you know, we just all have to kind of be aware of it. And if we don't see it around about Thanksgiving, start looking for it and contact the state to see where it's at. Okay. All right. Well, thank does anybody have any further questions for Nancy in regard to clarification on this process or does, everybody does good? The, uh, does the letter of refusal have to indicate the individual property ID numbers or is it just, no, we don't want any of them. Thank you. Or just a generic no. We have a standard um, letter from every year. Sorry, Nancy. It's oh, that's a, okay. I, I do believe it's just a standard rejection letter that we send back. Just checking. Okay. Okay. All right. So we can um, then move on to number four, code compliance officer hire. Okay. So Chief David, Ms. Bellett, and myself met with three candidates for code compliance officer. Um, I believe we all agreed that Mr. Ron Delbridge would be the best suited for this position. Um, he has already passed the chief's background check as he will be working closely with the police department. And I would ask that the board approve to hire Mr. Delbridge for a code compliance officer. Okay, is there any uh, questions or is anybody ready to make a motion? I'll move I'll that. Motion. Go ahead, Mr. Sutton. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve hiring Ron Delbridge is our code compliance officer. Support. Okay, there's a motion by Mr. Sutton, um, support by Mr. Spencer. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Motion carried. All right, next, um, number five. Utility billing, bad debt, write-off. Okay, so uh, Melinda Morgan with the water department. Um, every now and then when a property uh, is goes back and is sold uh, through tax auction, which I believe is what that is for, um, if there is a water bill connected to that property, um, we cannot hold the purchaser of that property responsible for that bill. We, um, it's no longer collectible. So in this case of $152.80 that we would have to request write off for. So we can't go after the original owner or uh, incur of incurrer of the debt? No, because the water, the water bill stays with the property. So um, when something like this happens, it ends up being a tax uh, write-off. We have to write it off. Man, so we go to all that trouble to keep the water bills getting paid by with the whole landlord-tenant deal, and we, we're still getting. I move that we write off $152.80 bad debt from 9200 Rhode Island Drive, number or B. I'll support that. Uh, there's a motion by Mr. Spencer and support by Ms. Richards. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes. Motion carried. All right. Uh, moving on to Beach Park work. Wait. Yeah. Beach Park work session schedule. Sorry. Okay, um, I was hoping that we could check everyone's availability to have the work session discussed in the last township board meeting um, to discuss what what we would like to do with the Oscoda Beach Park. Um, the reason I wanted to do that before the budget work session is if we had it come to some sort of agreement on money that we would like to set aside for some improvements. Um, I would like to do that before we have our last budget work session because that the beach park would, we could add in 
before this final budget work session. And to be clear to the public, we're not talking about selling it. We're talking about upgrades. Correct. Okay. Um, we are missing two board members um, right now, so it's kind of hard to, you know. Um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah, I, I know you weren't. Um, so it's unfortunate. Um, but Just a question, Anne. Are we, mm -hmm. are we talking about um, looking at the proposal that was drafted by um, uh, Beckett and Raiders several years ago and possibly refining that plan or? That was my uh, thought process, Bill. Yeah, that's, I, I think that's probably, I mean, we spent a considerable amount of money mm -hmm. with them to get that plan. And uh, of course, we might want to look at, you know, refining it a little bit or something, but right. uh, the, to go along with those basic plans, I think would, uh, would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. So would you guys rather I maybe send out an email to get a poll on dates instead? because we are down two board members. Well, considering both of those board members that are missing, you know, do have schedules that, you know, right. fluctuate a lot. I, I would say we almost have to, unfortunately, so. Yeah, can we just, I guess, make a motion to approve um, Ms. Klein coordinating that with all the board members to get that meeting set up so then we have it approved and once we coordinate that time through her, we can get it scheduled. Sure. Sure. Fine with me. Yep. She makes it easy because I know they're both not here and we also have the budget work session schedule, which she said she wanted to have the other one before. So then she can coordinate those with all of the board members as long as we make those motions. So can we just deal with the two items at once since we're missing, you know, obviously they're both going to be involved in the budget work session as well. So and move we that make... both the Beach Park budget, the Beach Park and the budget work session be scheduled by Tammy after communication with the board members. Yes, support. Okay, so there's a motion by Mr. Spencer and support by Ms. McGuire. Uh, roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Mr. Palmer? <laughs> yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. Richards? Yes, motion carried. Great, then moving on to number eight, old phone equipment request. Okay, Mr. Jackson is requesting the old phone board equipment from our previous phone system that he had supplied. Um, as for the payment, um, the previous superintendent had denied the request for payment. Um, I cannot be very specific on why that was. I do know part of that was because it was a handwritten receipt and there was no receipt for the, the part that was um, suggested that the 165 was for. Um, but I, I'm, I cannot be 100% sure there because I was not um, directly involved with that. Is that old phone equipment still in the building? Yes, it's the big board in the closet in the bathroom. It's like a big motherboard, the white. Uh, oh, the mainframe, gotcha, okay. So he would like that. And I told him he had to ask ask the board if because I can't just give it away, so. Me personally, I don't have any problem with him taking out, out data, you know, taking this old equipment and uh, removing it from the township provided it's not still in use, of course, in any way, shape or form. Okay. The $165 that he's saying that he's owed, I mean, the, he's, he submitted a, a handwritten invoice, you said? Yeah, it was like a, yeah, yeah, just kind of like what you're looking at it as letters. When was um, it dated? It was from last, uh, I think it was 2020. And when you say previous su superintendent, you're talking about Mitch or you're talking about Dave? No, I am talking about Dave. Okay. All right, well, a couple things. I guess I'll just pull on um, my knowledge of working with Mr. Jackson when I was employed with the township. He always gave handwritten invoices. That's just what he, what he did and we, we paid them. Um, he provided um, a great service, I guess, um, I think. And I know that um, Chief, uh, I mean, he did a lot of stuff with our phones. 
Um, and they were always handwritten invoices and we paid them for years. Um, so I, I don't think he's trying to scam us out of $165 for labor. I would say that he um, probably more than earned it. Um, and then also the equipment he loaned to us, um, he's just wanting that back. So we, we did over time purchase thousands of dollars worth of equipment for him that, that are ours and that are phones that maybe we could look at selling. I, I don't really know. They're good Avaya phones and there's still stuff out, out at Ani Medical. But I feel like, you know, I mean, he, according to his letter, um, loaned us this board. So he's just looking to get that board back um, and then be paid for a service that he rendered in 2020. Yeah, I would, uh, I would seems agree. reasonable to me. He, what do you think? Uh, yep. He he came in and, and uh, brought us this board and installed it. I would think he should be able to get his board back and we pay him $165 for the work he did to install it at the time. Right. I, well, there's also the fact that if he did install that board, then giving him the board back, I mean, if that's what he's asking for, that's all well and good. But if it's, I mean, but if we used it, then, I mean... Shouldn't we pay for it? Well, I don't think he's looking for, uh, he just wants his equipment back. I guess my biggest question would be, is if the piece of equipment comes out, um, as long as it doesn't interrupt, if he can guarantee it's not going to interrupt. Um, right, but he let us, our existing system. He let yeah. us borrow it based on the fact that, <laughs> that we were going to pay 450 to $500 for it, so according to, to his letter, to get a new one. And then we never well, did he, that. No. Right. No, that when the yeah. original when he brought that board down, it was because all our whole phone system went down. Yeah, so he um, brought in a, a, a temporary board that he's quote letting us borrow until the new phone system is up and running. Right, that's I'm just saying that's not the way it was put when it was brought in. I don't care one way or the. I'm just letting you know that it was. I guess my point is, is that he he let us borrow a board almost a year ago. A year in technology terms means that that board might be obsolete at this point. And is it fair for us to give him back a used piece of equipment or does, well, I guess that's what he's asking for. So I move yeah. that we give him back his ACS 509 board out of the Avaya phone system and pay him $165, pay him his $165 on, for, from his handwritten and valid invoice. Um, I guess I just want to add to that, just to, um, if you could just add to that motion, if you wouldn't mind, Jeremy, mm -hmm. as long as it doesn't disrupt any service oh, yeah. that we currently I will amend have. my motion okay. to include uh, the statement provided that removal of the ACS 509 board does not disrupt the communications of the township in any way. Okay, thank you. Who's going to determine that? I'm pretty sure that at this point, when we were, you guys are on it, the, the township is on a hosted phone system from ACS. Mm -hmm. So basically, he's going to have to go in there and unhook it and let it sit right. for a little bit. Everybody check their phones. If it's still, if everything's working, take it. If you guys want to let it set, you know, if you want to disconnect it and let it set for a week, just to be sure, I'm sure he would he would accommodate that, especially because you know we'll have a check waiting for him. So, and it's been this long. Would right, you, uh, he would be the only person, Jamie, that would be able to. And I mean, sure. if he and based on Miss Richards um, statements of his work and whatnot, and that he's been around for a while. I don't think that he would have a problem coming in and showing us exactly and telling us the, the truth about the system. So. Well, I've never had a problem with them. That's all I can say. So. Well, that's, but, there's something to be said for that, you know? Okay. All Still right. support that Josh? Yes, I do. All righty. All right. Roll call then. Ms. McGuire. Yes. Mr. Sutton. Yes. Mr. Spencer. Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Ms. Richards? Yes, motion carried. Okay, we're now moving on to the three agenda edition items. The first one is attorney support. Josh, it was, you have these three requests, so I'll be looking to you. Yep, um, uh, basically just gonna be making a motion to approve hiring an attorney um, for any longstanding litigation or backup support for Mr. Friel uh, with our um, former attorneys that we had talked to, we had multiple in the event that we were down one. Um, and this is like a kind of a just in case and uh, 
I guess a tool in Mr. Friel's toolbox. If he wants to take a month off to go to Florida after spending a year dealing with us, I feel he's totally uh, obliged to doing so. And um, other than that, I'm just looking for support and in that presence of having this there for him. So this is only so uh, this this attorney that you're talking about bringing in is only going to be support for Mr. Friel in the areas that he does not practice law and in the event of his vacation or inability Correct. to. Correct. Anything comes up, so he's got you know. I have no. I can tell you that in ten months I see how many things we have come up, and after talking with Mr. Friel, um, he's working his buns off, but there he does get overweighted sometimes and i feel just him having the ability to decide between what he needs to do operationally and if there are some things that don't necessarily fit that that's going to be at his discretion to let us know what he wants to do or if he wants to leave for a month and take a vacation so I we would be looking to be in a position where we don't have somebody or we don't have something um for anything else that we do now, like me and him discussed it's a small town um you're going to talk to a lot of people. There may be an issue where we end up having litigation and it could be somebody that he has worked with six months before or a year. Um, and just to kind of give him that ability to say, Hey, I may have done that. So in this point, I don't want to be a conflict of interest because I've had both people as a client. So just some of those little issues that we may run into, like I said, more of a contingency for him. Um, something that me and him discussed, um, a few weeks back about it, just kind of having that in place. And then ultimately, yeah, like I said, if, if I was him doing this job, I would want a vacation at some point. And I don't necessarily want to call him with his toes on the beach, drinking hand and say, Hey, we got a problem, Tim. Can you stop what you're doing? Isn't that what they're, why they're right. I guess my thought now, would be only that, if we have them on retainer, yeah. big retainer, well, big right. retainer. So like in the past, uh, you know, like again, um, you know, he suggested a labor attorney, you know, that kind of stuff. I guess my thought would be then we would ask him um, for some possibilities for backup if need be. Um, and maybe he that can come back to the board. But I. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. It's just um, kind of the same thing that uh, we have now for myself, Jamie and Miss Klein having a CPA available, just kind of checking those boxes before we get into any problems. So everybody has what they need so we can always get the job done. All right, so I guess maybe we um, need to ask Mr. Um, I don't mean that we're asking him now on a Zoom call, but that we ask him to maybe um, if there's a situation where, you know, uh, there might be a, a vacation or something, a backup person that he's going to recommend. Yeah. So I guess, Tim, you are on the call. If you could just maybe, um, I don't think there's any action that needs to be taken. I think if you could just provide that to us, um, that would be helpful. And then we can go from there would be my thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll mull it over. Um, maybe talk with Josh some more too. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Then moving on to the DWR. I'm sorry. I'm trying to read my own writing. DWRF and SRF checking accounts, I believe, were the next agenda edition. Yes, the yes. uh, DWRF and SRF, um, that was something that Ms. McGuire needed. I don't know if she wants to chime in on that. It's just the creation of accounts, I believe, to deposit those funds for tracking. That's correct. Yep. So we need um, actual checking accounts, Jamie, or we need um, ledger accounts checking actual physical checking accounts at the bank and the bank is requiring minutes um, from the board saying that we have approval to open those accounts and uh, kind of what they do for closing accounts too that's one of their requirements okay so we need an actual um motion motion serving me to be able to open these accounts for the township Okay. So would it be a motion to approve Ms. McGuire to open checking accounts for DWRF and SRF? Correct. Can I get a support? Um, I will support that. <laughs> Thank you. You gonna toss out some shouts, are you, buddy? And be like, can I get an amen? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amen. <laughs> All right. Hallelujah. 
All right, so there's a motion by Mr. Sutton and support by Ms. Richards to open up specific checking accounts for DWRF and SRF um, checking accounts for those grants or projects. Uh, roll call, please. DWSRF, I believe. Huh? DW? Oh, actually, DWRF and then SRF. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, that's what I thought I said. DWRF and SRF. Correct. LMNOP, just kidding, sorry. Um, okay, roll call, please. Mr. Spencer? Yes. Mr. Palmer? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Sutton, yes. Ms. Richards? Yes, motion passed. Um, next on, you had EIC um, permanent office. Yes. Um, we. That one, we've just been uh, bouncing Todd around kind of here, there, and everywhere. Um, just looking um, with a lot of things we're moving around at what we can do to get him a permanent office, um, just to be able to point people in his direction. I know we had an issue last week. We had a gentleman come in from the MEDC looking for him um, to discuss Brownfield grants and some other things. And thankfully, uh, we were able to locate him here on the premises before the gentleman got too far, but um, just kind of looking for a place for we can stick him, uh, whether that's a discussion decision tonight, but just a place for him to kind of cement himself so people know where to look for him, people know where to find him. Um, I know we've had, uh, we had him offsite before, we've talked about offsite discussions. Um, I kind of really like having him in the building because I do work with him on stuff for the EIC committee as well. Um, and I know whenever um, Rick's in or anybody else, it makes it easy to kind of touch base. So just looking for options on finding Mr. Dickerson a permanent home. Um, so we kind of have him on site and utilizing him and making sure he's working as efficient as possible. Um, I guess at one point in time, the code enforcement and um, zoning were in the same office. Um, code enforcement is a very part-time, you know, I mean, not a lot of hours. Is there any way that they could go back to being in the same office? And then perhaps the supervisor's um, office used to be where code enforcement was. Um, I could move into that because it's a much smaller office. And then Todd could be in this office, which is located next to, um, well, you all know where it's at. So there, would that be yeah. a possibility? Any problems with that, Nicole? I don't know if Nicole's on. Did she leave? Thought she was here. Her office is pretty crowded. Um, well, I they had a reason for splitting up too. I think it yeah, might have been a personality, but yeah, the zoning the zoning needed more room in that in that office. Uh, I believe I I think it worked out well. Uh, when Mr. Dickerson was off-site in the office, uh, and I believe he he's made some arrangements for the to be located in the new office that Roe is opening up. They have some additional space in there where he could have his office in the uh, in the Roe building right uh, there on Twenty Three that they're opening. That old Heritage House building. He can be there for free. I, I don't know what the agreement is, but I know uh, Rick said that they ha would have a space for them there. Well, the assessor's office will be open, right? Well, hopefully we'll be getting a new assessor. I was going to say, I don't yeah. know about that, but yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of get the idea out there so we have him landed somewhere and get a discussion going. So see what well, everybody, yeah. again, we, yeah, we're just kind of tackling these things as we, Right. Well, well, it sounds like Bill might have some information in regard to, you know, the fact that Todd's, you know, looking at another location, as long as it doesn't incur costs that the township um, would have to pay to be off site when, when we can figure out something for on site, um, I would be supportive of that. Um, but yeah, but yep. Um, well, I guess, you know, I threw out a scenario if that doesn't work. I again don't know what's um, all going on with those two offices sharing zoning and code enforcement. Um, but, you know, I think we have some room to move around in here, but yeah, well, whatever works like we for could the bigger look into good. that or um, 
I mean, maybe even um, if code enforcement's limited, that might be something. Um, I mean, would you be comfortable with that? And if because you're usually in the afternoons, and I think code enforcement, aside from the two eight hour days that he's going to be doing, that one's going to be open as well. So just some things to check on. We can talk with Nicole. Yep. I don't know if you'd be fine with that. And then also if Mr. Palmer would like to follow up with uh, Mr. Freeman down there, and then we can go over all those options and hopefully tell Todd where's forever, temporary, forever home is going to be for at least a little while. <laughs> right. I, so, I, well, I think Todd's so on the, he, Todd was on the call and he has spoken. I, I had asked uh, Rick to go speak with him the other day. And I think they had a discussion and came to some sort of an agreement on being in Rose's building there. So if Todd's still on the line, maybe he could speak to that himself. Or if Rick's on still on the line, I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I am, uh, I'm still here. Uh, Rick and I did chat. Um, I know he did offer up. He said he's got plenty of space there because they're not you know, fully utilizing the office as of yet. Uh, I'd like to tell you it was going to be uh, kind of um, a donation, but I wouldn't want to speak on behalf of Rick now that it's time to do a deal. Um, but I thought the intent was I could pop down there and use their office space. Okay, well, it sounds like we have a couple different things in the works, so we'll just, whatever you think is the best fit, Todd, you can go from there. All right, so I think we covered that topic. Yes, we did. Yes, okay. So moving on to, um, I guess, public comment. Second public comment section of the board meeting. If anybody in the public has a uh, comment they would like to make, again, this is open uh, to, doesn't have to be on the agenda or not, I guess, but township related, I would assume, so. Public comment? Should have the ability to use the raise hand feature. I see one raise hand. Deborah, is it Roush? You should be able to unmute yourself. Okay. Am I unmuted? You sure are. Yes. Okay, it's Deborah Roush. Um, 513 Ogama Street. Um, I do own a house in um, Escota. I was born and raised in Escota. I was a, I've been a legal resident of Escota for about for all but 15 years of my life. Um, I guess from some of the comments I've seen on Facebook, a lot of people think that my opinion should be irrelevant, but I obviously disagree. Um, I emailed the superintendent the other day to ask some questions. And the response that I got back was um, to send a Freedom of, Freedom of Information Act email to the clerk's office and that fees would have to be paid before this information is received. So um, I called the township clerk, Josh Sutton, and I started asking my questions. And one of my questions was about the amount of money that had been spent on the Lake Street property. And he told me it was about $500,000. Um, from the records that I've seen online, it seems like it was more around 541,000. Um, so to me, it's kind of concerning that um, some of the board members don't seem to even know exactly how much money was spent to by the township to, buy that property and especially when we possibly are selling it at a loss. Um, all right, I also, in my conversation with Mr. Sutton, um, asked about Escota Hotels LLC and I was told that that is Steve Aldrich who owns, who is the son of the Lakewood Shores owner. Um, from what I'm gathering now, that might not be true, um, but it, I wasn't sure who the Steve was that spoke on the 913 meetings, that 913 meeting, that's why I asked that question. But he told me it was um, the son of the Lakewood Shores owner. Um, I, we also discussed the zoning that was changed to allow the four-story building 
to be built on Lake Street. And he said that that happened sometime in the spring 2021 after the final lot was purchased. Um, some of the questions I still feel that haven't been answered by the board or the township are, like I said, the total amount paid for the Lake Street property, including demolition costs. Um, was the, act, the property actually listed for sale and open for bids or was it only offered to one buyer or developer? Um, um, I'd still like to know if the developers have any con connection to Lakewood Shores. Um, like to know if the hotel will have special rights to the public beach. And last meeting, there was a comment made about putting a roundabout down by the beach. And I was kind of wondering what that was all about, if that's something that the township is considering or what it, you know, what exactly it means. Um, also, will the um, hotel builder or developer, I should say, um, be hire, hiring local construction people or is he bringing in his own company or own people? And is he also bringing in his own people um, for employment? Um, some of my other concerns are that, like I said last time at the last board meeting, we had somebody named Steve speaking and I had no clue who Steve was. So I don't think that um, people are being properly identified um, in the meeting so that, you know, we know who they are. And I also would like to say, I still think it's a huge mistake and a disservice to the residents and taxpayers of Osco to, to allow a four-story hotel to be built within feet of our beach. And my last comment would be that um, when I go back and read through some of the minutes, they seem like they're very vague and lacking a lot of details that um, are discussed in the board meetings. So I guess that's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Deborah. Great, anybody else for a public comment? Please use the raise hand feature. Well, can you get me in? Yeah. There he is. All right. Hey, Brian. Hey there. Hey. Hello. Uh, I've been looking in these grants quite a bit. Boy. Something else. But the MDNR trust fund grant, of course, is what I'm keen on. And what we're looking at on the other side of the state and how they do things in Petoskey, they've been successful 40 times. Grand Traverse, Traverse City, 64. And uh, we're looking at uh, 26 in the county. Now we've received, uh, looks like about eight. Of course, we're in the Iron Bell, and that's through the uh, DNR, too. So that's why, you know, we're talking for a And uh, we really should consider making that uh, non disposable for now. And that's what I've been calling for for quite a while. I think it would be the best move. We've got a lot of things going on there. Uh, Mr. Dickerson has a lot of things going on with uh, the hotel, the, the apartments. Uh, looks like we're going to really uh, have thoughtful uh, progress at the beach itself with all of this. So there's really a, a lot of things going on that he could apply himself to. We can get our thoughts in order better on Verta. I think it's a prudent move. The one thing I'm showing you on the other side of the state, they're invested in to this grant granting process and they're they're digging right in the DNR. But us going in, from my look at it, we grade out higher going in on any grant opportunity. We're just not doing it. And uh I I I really am enthralled with the, the DNR. The more I learn more about it, it fits right in there. And they're talking uh, the parks as far as economics, and they're even acknowledging the MEDC in the, the placement of it, in place, as they call it, and the connection to the other parks. Now, we qualify uh, extra points. You have a pathway from Furta to the beach prop, you know, Lake Huron, right between Gaslight and uh, the condos there. So we have an easement there. I don't know that we talk about it much. I'd like to see that more 
Um, but you connect that in the program, and that's your blue ways. So you get more points. It's a regional draw. And so uh, they're not in competition. As we talk about grants, I think it would be very wise that we just don't look at them at put it all in one thing and point a finger at it and say grants. Uh, they're different grants. The MEDC has some good grants. But the DNR is your granddaddy. It's your Cadillac. And they, they won't be beat, like I've said before. They're codified in law. They're in the Constitution. Uh, there's nothing, it's nothing but good. You know, I've had my beef with government at all levels. Uh, but believe me, this is a the finest piece of legislation for parks and recreation I've ever seen written. So when we look at it, I think we should look at the history of it. It's right about when I was in high school and how great it actually is. And let us work with them. But when you Make a parkland, which FERTA is. It's registered. We've got her in there in the two five-year plans, and I, I want to see it on paper that it's in the next one. Let's get our thoughts together. I realize what Mr. Spencer says. He wants to move the town forward. I get all of that. But this is a time frame where we can really be smart. That property is only going to rise in value, folks. It really is. The connectivity, don't forget this now, between the parks allows you more money. And a regional draw allows you more money. The success rate in this granting program, the MDNR, is at the last lot of $37.4 million, is 55%, folks. Only 137 applied, 74 received. This is the good stuff, so we can be proud of this. Let's learn more about it. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. Thanks, Brian. Okay. Anybody else for public comment? Okay. I see one more raised hand. Larry Holland, go ahead. You should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, good evening, folks. Uh, just a reminder, um, you know, recently Oscoda took some uh, bad press in the semi-national scene, um, and we need to work hard to uh, present a positive image uh, the best that we can. And, uh, you know, negative things do happen, uh, but they shouldn't over overcast all of the positivity that happens in Oscoda on a regular basis. And uh, I would just uh, simply encourage board members uh, to uh, continue the process of bringing something positive to the board during their board comments and uh, spend a little time focusing on on what the outward image is going to be presented uh, to media and uh, to uh, uh, you know the general public at large that uh, should be carrying the torch of being proud about their community um, aside from that um, you know decent meeting tonight um, i want to encourage that we uh, uh, get a plan in place to return to in-person meetings um, you know, even if there are some uh, slight restrictions uh, and uh, continue the idea of bringing back some of the things that have been uh, tabled in the past. Uh, a lot of committees have been formed and we have not been hearing reports from these committees from ethics to uh, uh, social media to all sorts of things going on. And also, I want to uh, bring back that uh, we need to solve the issue of a social district before next summer. Uh, we really blew the uh, uh, blew the proverbial uh, top off the idea. Uh, in the community, but uh, we did not get sufficient action from the board to carry that out. Uh, and I want to see that done uh, uh, certainly before next summer, uh, because a lot of communities are uh, benefiting from uh, having a designated district uh, that is not uh, about uh, drinking out in public. It's about being able to have uh, events, uh, you know, that are brought on a regular basis uh, that don't restrict the participants to have to file new permits each and every time that they want to do something. It converts that district into a true entertainment district, not just a social drinking district. And I, I want to uh, continue to emphasize this through the winter uh, as, uh, like I said, we missed it this year, uh, but uh, we shouldn't be uh, uh, missing it next year. So that's my comment and have a wonderful evening. Thanks, Larry. Okay, anybody else? Um, I'm gonna kind of do a last call for public comment. Anyone? Okay, hearing none. Uh, moving on hey. then. To, oh, I'm here. Okay. Hello. All right. This is Mary Smith, Oscoda resident. Hi, Mary. When I Sorry. Entered, hi. 
Um, when I entered the township hall about a week ago, there was a sign on the door that read something like, if you are not fully vaccinated, you must wear a mask to enter. I find this offensive. If a person wears a mask or not, it's a personal choice. If a person's vaccinated or not, that is a personal choice. We do still live in a free country. I hate to see our township government making distinctions between its citizens. That is mass versus no mass and vaccinated versus unvaccinated. If that sign has not yet been removed, I hope it will be. Mandates by government are not good. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Okay. Um, all right. I don't, I see Dirk uh, uh, raised hand. You should be able to unmute yourself. There. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's see. Where did I put this? I don't know if you guys are aware of it. I've mentioned it to some people, but the way that we're linking to the electronic meetings is a violation of the Open Meetings Act. In the act regarding these sorts of meetings, it says the public notice on the website must be included on either the home page or a separate web page that's dedicated to public notices for non-regularly scheduled or electronic public meetings. Um, and it clearly describes its purpose for public notification, the electronic meetings any scheduled meeting of a public body may be held as an electronic meeting under this section. The problem is on the website, you really have to dig around to actually get to the link. Many times I've gone through and it's been difficult to find because you have to scroll down and then you have to go to our calendar section. And the calendar section defaults to just like a event community calendar which there is like nothing on to get to the township calendar you have to click on the tab that's just to the right of the general calendar then when you get to that calendar if you click on like today's date that's highlighted it doesn't do anything you have to look in towards the right of that and then there's a link for board meetings and then you, so we're like five links down from what the loss is needs to be clearly available on the main page and then when you do that you can click on there and then you get the information on the meeting. Now, some of the other things in this law are the meetings have to be accessible to ADA people. That information also needs to be on that exact same spot. And what was the other? There was actually a couple of other ones. It appears to me that the chat feature amongst us watching and listening to these has been turned off. That also is a violation of the Meetings Act. Um, I wasn't aware of the vaccination thing, so I'll talk to you guys maybe at the next meeting about that. But please, please, we've gotten some violations on the Open Meetings Act before. Um, our attorneys seemed not familiar with what exactly was that. And I, this is every time that we have an electronic meeting like this, if this is not being filed, we're violating the law once again. And I would encourage to get to meetings that are both online and in person. If we can pack people into the Warrior Pavilion, I don't know why uh, we can't go in there and have our meetings there. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Okay, thanks, Dirk. Okay, all right. Anybody else for public comment? This is the last call for public comment. Going once, going twice, gone. Moving on then to um, board comment. Is there any board members that wish to comment at this time? I have a couple things. Okay. Uh, first, just a reminder of the fashion show that's coming up from the American Business Women's Association. And what they do is uh, the proceeds go to local scholarships. So if you haven't reserved your table, um, get with one of the ABWAA people or Jill Ritter at 387-5748 to reserve your table if they're already not sold out. But that's one of the good things that's happening around town. 
and then and that's August or October 7th that that's going on. Also, the Lions Club Fall Festival and Arts and Crafts Show is coming up this Saturday, October 2nd, out at Oscoda High School. So be sure to check that out. Okay, thanks, Jamie. Yep. Anybody else? Board members? Um, I would just like to let, um, was it Mary Smith? That made the comment on the mask sign? Yes. Yes. I would just like to let her know that that sign is down. And the only one we're keeping up is just the one that um, basically asks you to do your due diligence if you're sick or anything else. Um, so basically just using your, your own behavior to make sure if you are sick, you're not bringing that in. Um, so other than that, I think she should be happy with that. Okay. Thank you, Josh. You're welcome. All right, any other board comment? Well, to address uh, Mr. Hunt's concerns, <clears throat> we have updated the website. Our, our, the, uh, the calendar is still there, exactly like you presented it. Um, there is also on the homepage when you scroll down about halfway, actually just right after the front where it says agendas and, and meetings. And the, uh, they've been working on updating that specific portion of the website where it says agendas and minutes directly underneath the main graphic. And they, you can see in there that they have started putting those meeting in, uh, that meeting information in there for your review. Um, we are working on uh, the hybrid meetings that is going to uh, be spoken about in the next uh, meeting or so, the next regular meeting or so. So we're moving forward on that. The committee has made, uh, pulled out quite a bit of information and uh, we're gonna bring it to the board and make some decisions on that. And that's it. Okay. I think that leaves, who else hasn't? Mr. Palmer, did you have anything? Uh, just, I wanted to remind everybody, I mentioned this a couple of months ago, but there is gonna be a change in uh, uh, phone numbers. Uh, they're changing, uh, there's three area codes and 989 is one of them. Uh, so in order to make a local call, you'll have to dial nine, uh, the entire, uh, perf dial the 989, uh, even to make a local call. Uh, that'll, that's supposed to start in October. So just if uh, you're used to just dialing a number uh, here locally and you can't get through, uh, you'll have to dial the, the uh, area code for that plus the number starting sometime in October. Okay, all right, thanks, Bill. Um, yeah. I just wanted to, I guess my, my comment is um, I was emailed some information from Joe Brin on the official unveiling of the military static display equipment um, that's gonna be open to the public. Um, and that is gonna be October 9th at 1 p.m. Um, that's going to be like basically where the circle of flags is just a little bit past there, all that new equipment. Um, so there's going to be some speak some speakers and um, quite a presentation. Uh, that group for the Veterans Memorial Park do a tremendous amount of uh, work for our community, uh, volunteer a lot of their time. So hopefully everybody can come out there and check out that equipment for the formal presentation. I mean, it's there now for you to see it, but they're actually going to be um, doing a um, unveiling. So check that out October 9th at 1 p.m. So um, with that, I make a motion to adjourn at 9.01. Oh, no. Support. Thanks. All right. Have a good night, everybody. All right. Good night. Thanks, everybody.